Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in last episode, in the last episode, we showed you how we can actually start getting gamepad and keyboard input set up and working inside of our main menu. Now, we showed you how to get all of that set up, but we haven't actually showed you how to actually apply it. We haven't showed you how to actually change the appearance of the buttons and then fire off actions based on, you know, the key position on each button of the menu. You. So that's what we're going to be going on uh, and doing today. Now if you haven't seen the previous episode, I advise that you go ahead and do so. You can do that using the thumbnail in the top left hand corner. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and carry on. So in the previous episode, I actually showed you how we can... Uh, you know, how we're going to be building it around our key position. So what we need to do now is we actually need to start changing the key position based on, you know, the inputs going up and down. So right now we've just got branching and conditioning for the input going up and down. We also need to set that up for the key position because we don't actually want it to go above two and we don't want it to go below zero. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're essentially just going to add in two more branches into here. So we're going to add in branch and then we're just going to control C, control V and we're going to copy that twice. Let's go ahead and hook that up here and then hook that up there. I'm going to leave this disconnected for now and now we need to set up the conditioning. So what we're going to do is integer and we're going to just check to see whether or not it's going to be higher or lower than the previous value like I showed you previously. So for up we want to make sure that it's no higher than uh, you know it's or it's less than something. That less than something is going to be three or less than two. Yeah so we want to have integer is no greater than two or is less than two. There we go. So return true if it's less than two. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're just going to hook up key position into there. So now it's only going to do that if the key position is, you know, below that number. And then we're going to do the same thing for down here. But instead of it being, you know, greater than two, uh, it's less than two. We need to make sure it's greater than uh, one or zero, whatever it is. Let's go ahead and show you how we can do that. So we're doing the same thing, integer. And we're going to make sure that it is actually greater than, and for us, it's going to be zero. So what we've got to do here is just hook this up again, just like that. And hopefully it should all work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and change the key position. So we're going to change the number on that. So from true, we're going to go ahead and set the key position. So type in ket, uh, set key position new. And then we're going to do the same for the one underneath as well. And make sure that we hook that up for true as well. And what we need to do from here is because the top one is actually the up and the bottom one is down. So for up, what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the integer. So we're just going to do incre uh, increment or increment integer. Or you can just do integer plus integer. That's what I'm going to do now just to make it nice and simple. So I'm going to do a plus on here. And then I'm going to do a minus on the one beneath. Let's go and do that. So integer minus integer. There you go. And what we're going to do again is just hook up key position to here and then key position to here. And now we can test if our system is working. What I'm going to do is just quickly hook these up to the print string so we can actually see these numbers displayed on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and press compile, move this over, press play, and we're going to go up and down. You can see it only goes up to two. And when we go down, it only goes to zero. So we know the key position is all working now. So that's brilliant. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these print strings things. And what we got to do now is actually set up changing the appearance of these buttons based on that key position. So it's quite simple to do really. What we're going to do is use a switch on int. And this switch on int node is essentially just going to switch or do something based on an integer. For us, this integer is going to be the key position, the one that we just set. And we can add more than one pin for this. We're going to add three pins, one for each, you know, option. So start game, options, and then quit game. And we're going to add two of these. I'm just going to copy and paste. And we're going to hook it up just like this with the key position new going straight into the selection. So there's a whole bunch of different things you can do from here. But for us, 
that's going to be simply changing the background colour just to give it a slight tint on the buttons. Now referencing these buttons is quite simple. Hopefully you have named those like I showed you in the previous episode and then you're going to be able to access them through variables. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag in start game, I'm going to get a reference to it and from here I can make a bunch of changes to it using this reference. So I'm going to drag out this little blue pin uh, bit here and I'm going to type in set background color and this is going to allow us to change the background color. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I set zero to set background color on this and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give us a slight blue tint similar to my hover effect that I've already got. Let me just go ahead and show you that. So if I go here, you can see I've got a slight blue hover effect and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be trying to repeat that effect for the gamepad stuff. So set background cover of that to that slight blue tint and then I'm going to do the same thing for one and two as well. But instead of being start game, number one is going to be options number two is going to be quick game. So let's just go ahead and move these over. So let's go ahead and get the reference to options. Hold up. Okay, let's scroll down. Op the options button, not my options box. Got to make sure I get that right. Just like that. And then number two is going to be quick game. And I'm going to hook that up there. And I'm going to make sure I've got it all set. So now hopefully when I go ahead and press play if I go up you can see it's actually giving it that tint but the problem is it's not going away so I'm going to show you how to fix that in a second and we also need to duplicate all of this stuff here so that it actually uh, you know does it for when it's going down as well so just hook these up 0 1 and 2 and just double check your buttons here uh, you know making sure it's all the right stuff so press compile play and then you just go up, up, and whatever you need to do. So that's all working. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's, what else is going on. So the next thing that we need to do now is we actually need to, uh, you know, change your stuff back uh, once you change, set a new color. So the easiest way to do this for us is simply going to be, uh, you know, to set the background color of the other two options. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this and I'm going to hook up one of these to each of these and essentially if I've got one of those I'm going to do the other two options in there and we're going to set that back to a normal color. The normal color for us for the background is just going to be white so I'm just going to type in the hex code for white press ok and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this a whole bunch of times. So bang 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 there you go and we're just going to drag these in trying to keep it nice and neat and tidy so I can understand it when I'm going back to it. There we go. And like I showed you before, we're just going to be hooking up the references. So let's go ahead and go to the top and see exactly which references I need. So for this one, we've just changed the color of start game. So what we need to do is get these two references, control C, control V, and just hook them up into the target. Because those are the ones that we need to change if we've just changed you know, the start game. We want it to all go back to normal. So now I'm going to do the same thing for this one, for options. What we need for the options one then is quick game and start game. So I'm just going to grab those and I'm going to put them in. Now it may start getting to look real complicated in a second, so don't worry about that. As long as you understand what you're doing, it will be completely fine. So the last one we got here is quick game. We're just going to grab these last two. Sorry. Control C, Control V, and we're just going to drag these in just like that. Now, if you don't want to do this whole process over again, what you could do is just go ahead and just control, uh, just copy all of this stuff from up here, and then just you know delete this and just place it in. So Control V, drag it in, and then just hook it up. Because once again, like I said, it's just a matter of duplicating the whole process for going up and down. If I go ahead and press compile, press play you should be able to see you can move the options up and down. At the moment, I can see there's a slight bug at the moment. It's going a bit upside down for me, I'm not too sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go ahead and reverse the up and down over here. Yep, I'm just going to go ahead and reverse that. So I'm going to change this to up. 
and I'm going to change this one to down. There you go, compile, and there we go, let's press play. There you go, and now it's moving up and down perfectly. You may need to make sure you do that change in yours as well. It's very simple, but you can see the buttons are now going up and down. However, the problem we've got now is we can't actually press enter, press A on the gamepad or anything like that to, you know, do the next bit. So the next bit is very simple and it's very similar to what we've done already. We're just going to be checking whether or not the input key is down. And then we're just going to use uh, the switch on int node again to, you know, fire off something based on, you know, that key position. So you see you got switch on int here. What we're going to do is hook up the, the last uh, sequence node into another switch on int. And then we're just going to hook up for zero to the, you know, the button for start game and then the options one and the third one. It's quite simple. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how you can do all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and press stop and go ahead and do it. So the then number two node in our sequence, which is going to be the last little check now for our menu, we're just going to go ahead and uh, just do it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a delay just like before. And then to, next to this, we're going to do a branch again. So branch and then condition is going to be the get player controller stuff. So get player controller. Try not to type it wrong like I do. There you go. Chuck it in there. Is input key down. And this time, instead of using the up or down arrows, we're going to use enter or A on the gamepad, whatever you want to work with. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and use enter. And I'm going to go ahead and set that to the condition. And we're just going to leave that here. And now if it is down, which is going to be true, what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and fire off an event based on this key position. So once again, we're going to use switch on int. And from here, we're going to get a reference to the key position again. So we actually, so the, you know, the game actually knows what the position is. And then we're going to add the pins for zero, two, uh, zero, one, and two. And then if you've actually made this menu already, you will already have all of the buttons set up for changing to the option screen, starting the game or quitting the menu or quitting the game. So all you got to do essentially is just drag that down to the appropriate functions. So zero for me is going to be start game, which looks a little bit like, where is it? Quit game, start game. So I'm going to hook that up in there. Option two is going to be options. So let's go ahead and do that switch on int and options is this one which is where I just set the visibility to change it to a second screen and then the last one quit game is just going to be for our function to quit the game here very simple press compile press save and let's just be normal developers and pray that it all works so if I go up and down you can see it's moving that's perfect I press enter and it goes to the options menu that it's perfect, it all works. Same goes for quit game, press enter, and it closes it. That's brilliant. So hopefully, now that I've shown you this over the past two tutorials, you will understand exactly how you can use inputs to actually, you know, uh, play around with the menu, you know, go up and down in the buttons, and then move on further. Now, it's gonna get a little bit more complicated if you wanna have more than one screen. What you're gonna have to do is essentially just adding another branch node, to see, you know, which screen it's on and then have a second position, uh, key position variable for the next screen or the third screen and so on and so forth. But for now, hopefully you should have a basic understanding of how you can manipulate a menu using inputs. Thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.